The benefits of beach fishing low tide. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. This afternoon I'm down at the beach again, and you know what? We always have to make the most of the opportunities that present themselves. And today I have a low tide just before dark. In this video I'm going to explain exactly why I'm fishing this low tide, what I'm thinking, and the sorts of fish that I intend to catch. So make sure that you like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Put some questions in the comments. Let's get started. Just got to get my rod spike nice and firm in the sand, otherwise I don't want it to get pulled over if a decent fish puts a bit of pressure on the rod. So I'm using a 12 foot beach rod today. This is, it's an awesome rod because it's really light, but it's got the length, super light. And I have a 6,000 size reel spooled with 20 pound monofilament line. And actually my leader, it's monofilament all the way. I don't have a fluorocarbon leader on today. I've just got straight mono all the way. So, I mean, I fished like that for probably 40 years before fluorocarbon came into existence. Caught zillions of fish, so I know it works. So I actually have some beach worms. I've got a few beach worms left over from another session, but I'm also going to pull a few while I'm here as well, because it happens to be low tide. I just want to top up the bait that I have. And initially I'm going to put a line out with two hooks. I'm going to set it out there. I expect to catch a fish while I'm catching worms, actually. Um, then when I've just got a few more worms, I'll just focus on the fishing. But because of the low tide, I'm actually, walk out, I'm actually able to walk out onto a shallow sandbar and cast to a spot that there's no way I could get there at high tide. It's a place at the end of the beach where all the water washes down and swirls around it. You can actually see sand being stirred up in the water out there. It's actually a great recipe for a, a whole variety of different types of fish. We'll have the turn of the tide before too long, just on dark, the tide will turn and start coming in. But I fully expect to potentially catch brim, trevally, whiting, salmon, tailor, and even mulloway in a location like this. It's gonna walk out a little bit. I'm gonna go out onto the shallow bar to reach where I wanna to get to. If this was high tide, where I'm standing right now would probably be up to here. So I certainly couldn't do this at high tide. And if it was high tide, my baits would be landing on this flat sandbar. The tide still has about an hour to go out. So it's gonna get shallower, which is great. And then we'll have the turn of the tide. So I'm actually walking out a fair way. It's only about 20 to 30, 20 centimeters deep, maybe 30 centimeters deep here. And there's a lovely eddy at the back out there. There's lots of sand being swirled up. And there's a nice channel beside the rocks here. So it's got great potential. I can cast quite a long way with this. I'll be able to get in the zone. Oops, there goes a backwash. I'll be able to get right in the zone without too much effort. Okay, it's going straight where I want it. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. I might just stand here and hold it just for a second, just in case I get a bite really quickly. As the sun gets lower and starts to disappear, this little channel here next to the rock should come into its own. And the beauty of these places that you, is you really expand the number of species that you can, poten you can potentially catch because you have the combination of reef and sand rather than being in the middle of the beach where it's all just sand, you will get different species. I'm getting a bite actually. I just felt a bite, I thought I could feel a bite. I'm just gonna wait. You know what that means? It means I was stuck on a bit of rock, interestingly. Often when you get close to the reef at the end of a beach, there's a few scattered rocks. I think I just was on one then. It's like... That one there didn't want to come up. It's not a huge worm, but I'll get a couple of baits out of this one to add to my little stash. It's quite a big one here, and this wave should come up. 
it's actually, I'll have to actually let go of these and use two hands to get it. So when the water goes back, That was a really big worm. I broke its head off, unfortunately, even with my fingers. He's not that big, but maybe one more will do. There's a few big worms here. That last one that I chopped his head off was as thick as my finger and would have been like that big. But the problem was, is I had to actually because I'm not using a stocking, I actually had to throw these fish down because I'd need both hands to grab the worm because the really big ones you can't pull out with one hand, they're too strong. So I was too slow. It's not massive, but... Oh, look, he's tiny, look. It's just, just a little guy. Oh, there, he's still there. He's still eating that fish. Oh, I think I might close my fingers and grab him. That's a one that's a one bait worm. <laughs> Just a little little fella. Okay. That one's a little bit fatter. That one. But that'll do. I don't need many. It's enough to catch a, a feed of fish with. And all I did was hold a few pilchards in my hand. If you'd like to learn how to catch beach worms, head on over to my website. I have a, a course. I've written a 50-page book and I have a course of three videos. It's really good value. You would pay for it in less than a bag limit of worms. One daily bag limit and the course has covered the cost of worms for the rest of your life. One of the things that I love about fishing is the whole learning aspect. So much you only learn by actually doing it. You know, there are some places it's amazing because we can talk about tides, you know, high tide is good, low tide is good. But there are some places that are really good at low tide that are no good at high tide. Other places that are good at high tide and are no good at low tide. But you'll only find that out by testing and trying different things. So I've just moved from where I was to a different spot this time. You know, I enjoy that. As I've mentioned before, I, don't, I won't sit still in one spot. It's not like I'm working crazily or anything like that, certainly not. I'm having fun, but it's just exciting. It's kind of like, it's just part of that, having a strategy to catch fish. And it's always so, so good when a plan comes together. Nothing like it when you actually have a strategy and achieve it, it's fantastic. It gives you a lot of satisfaction with your fishing. That was a good bite, why didn't I strike? I had a really good bite but I didn't strike, I was waiting for it to take it more. Wow, that was a good bite. Why didn't, I, why didn't it take my bait? I probably should have struck then. I think I'm caught on the edge of a rock again. It's got to get it off that rock. But that was a solid bite then. It's going to wind my line in and check it. I want to land about there. Good right where I want it to land. When you're fishing off the beach, it's not so much about a matter of just standing on the sand and casting out your line. It's a matter of getting your bait into the area where you estimate that the fish will be feeding. And if that means walking out a little bit and getting your feet and your legs a little bit wet, that's all right.
Okay, so that's Mr. Trevally. Woohoo. He's swallowed that worm well and truly. Okay, I'm on again. Alright, well that didn't take so long. Beautiful time of the day to be fishing though right now. I think my bait was out there for about maybe 15 seconds. I sort of cast it in a similar spot to last time. It seems to me by the fight that it's um, possibly Trevally again. Although there's a little bit of weight, so. It's coming in onto the shallow sandbar now, just over to my right. Okay, so. Flushing around a lot. It's a bigger trevally this time, quite a bit bigger. Look at this guy. He's quite a good sized trevally, this one. Just get him out of the water. This guy's a bigger fish. That's actually a really beautiful eating size trevally. They are a stunning fish. They really like beach worms and fishing these corners at the end of the beach, that's when you really pick them up. So I want to get my line out there, back, back out there pretty quick. See how that looks there, but I might need to cast out again. We'll wait and see if I'm in the right spot. Okay, another fish, thankfully. Looks like I'm going to have a lovely feed tonight and a beautiful time down at the beach. Stunning sunset. Very good. How awesome. Catching a few worms on site. And then some beautiful, lovely, fresh fish. Where are they? They're here somewhere. Where is it? A bit of current in the water and when the fish swim against the current there's a fair bit of fair bit of pull. So I've landed another beautiful trevally here. This place is definitely Trevally City that's for sure. Plenty of trevally, but they're beautiful to eat. Really beautiful to eat the trevally. You can see that uh, worm hanging out, of it, hanging out of his mouth there. Yeah, like I said, they love the worms. Yep. 
Oh, on again. Yep. Beautiful. I'm looking forward to eating this fish. I think I'm going to walk backwards <laughs> towards the shore. Oh, this one might be something different. Yep, I think so. Okay. Definitely not a trevally. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Well, the Trevally are winning tonight, but the salmon are still here. <laughs> well, at least the Trevally are winning, you know, winning three to one at the moment. I chose the spot that I'm fishing tonight specifically because it was low tide, because I knew I could walk out onto a shallow sandbar and access some good water at the end of the beach. There's no way I could do that here at high tide. So that's another one of the subtleties with beach fishing. I love it because I just love the variety. I love being able to estimate the, um, you know, what's, what's available and what the options are. And you know, the swell is just a good size for this spot. It's not too big, not too small. So the tide has turned and is starting to come in. So I've probably only got another 30 minutes that I can fish this spot before it starts to get too deep. And as it is, I walk out probably 40 metres across the sandbar to be able to cast into the channel. But it's proving productive. Just thought I'd come in a little bit. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, I think the tide's definitely coming in. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! You know, and in summertime, this is... It's awesome. It's not even summer yet. Well, I haven't had a nibble yet so far, this cast. Yep, as soon as it hit the water. Bam! That's funny, that. Oh... Because I cast my line out in one spot, wasn't getting any bites. So I thought, nah, I'm not leaving it there. I'm going to um, pull it in and cast it out again. Because I find that sometimes, that you'll land near the fish. So this certainly has not been a boring session. It's been very productive.
Can you guess what it is? It's quite a good sized salmon actually. Quite a big fat fella. He fought very hard. Yeah, he's certainly, oh man, he's super thick. I can barely, I can barely fit my hand around him. Very thick through the shoulders. You see how thick he is through the shoulders. Very, very solid fat fish. Now, I'm actually gonna let this guy go. Cause I've got a few nice trevally and I've also got a salmon as well. So I don't really need this guy, so I'm going to let him go. It's deep enough here for him to um, happily swim away. I'll put him in, just put him there for a second. There he goes. Got to reload with a lovely bit of this um, fresh worm. Put plenty of that worm on. Oh yeah! I'm on again. Okay, this is pretty solid. Man, I've got a bit of weight here. Oh, my drag needs to be tightened up a bit. Sugar. Now I'm fully loaded up here. Goodness me. I think I'm going to have to walk over to the left a little bit. Very interesting. It's swimming in towards the shore. I delayed my strike then, so I may have two fish. It does feel a bit salmon-ish, but we'll, um, we'll see. It hasn't leapt out of the water. It's pulling a lot of line. Man, that thing's pulling hard. What a good fighter it is. That fish just screamed out a fair bit of line then. It really did. Put its head down and went. Just got to wait till it eases up a little bit. So that I don't put too much pressure on the line. <coughs> it's not really fighting like a trevally, so... Just a, just um. There's a lot of bait fish in the water. There's bait fish everywhere. It's just as this is just um. Wow. Would you believe um. Would you believe I've lost my sinker and my bottom hook. All I've got is a top hook and a fish. So I've lost most of my rig. I'm not quite sure what happened there. But yeah, look at that guy. He fought so well. Really, um, really fought hard. So, it's another one I can barely get my hand around. So he's just hooked in the side of the mouth. But you know, it's been quite... Uh, quite hectic tonight. I really gave myself really just about an hour to have a fish off the beach. Had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching my videos. Make sure that you make some comments. I do try to answer as many as possible. And like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to let this guy go because I've got plenty of fish. And I'll see you really soon.